Hello, Avocado. My name is Sam Arano. I've been doing Israeli election coverage, and today it's finally time to do the party rundown. Now, I thought I would leave the party rundown to an expert, but... Eh, you're cool. Okay, let's get to it. All right. Hey, uh, it is definitely the same day as I shot that. Thanks to JJ McCullough, his YouTube channel is here. And we're going to start with the right-wing parties. Why? Because in Hebrew, we go from right to left. And also, they're the ones in power. The Likud party is led by this man, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Most of the current cabinet comprises members of the Likud party, as does about half of the right-wing vote as a whole. Generally speaking, Likud is more supportive of traditional Jewish religious institutions, supports more privatization of state-run assets and utilities, is less supportive of equal rights for non-Jewish minorities, is generally opposed to organized labor, wants more restrictions on the press and academia, supports a permanent status quo in the West Bank, and is generally more skeptical of Western-style liberal democracy. Not to put too fine a point on it, but most of Likud's ideology really revolves around enriching its own members and protecting its leaders from legal or political consequences, which shouldn't be too surprising given how much of its support comes from the Mafia. This is ironic because Likud's base is mainly voters who are poorer and more urban, especially descendants of Jews from non-European countries who historically had very little political power in the early days of the state. Now, the Likud party didn't used to be so far to the right, and if you're feeling nostalgic for the party of old, then have I got someone for you. Kulanu is led by Finance Minister Moshe Kahlon and was formed by a consortium of Likud members who felt that the Likud party had become too kleptocratic. Generally speaking, it is also very pro-capitalist, but with more protections for workers as well as consumers. It's more supportive of equality for Arab Israelis, and it is still broadly supportive of a two-state solution. On the other side of that is the New Right, which was founded this year by both Education Minister Naftali Bennett and Justice Minister Ayelet Shaked. These two are the main culprits in pulling Likud to the right, and in fact they don't believe it has gone far enough affirming Israel as the nation-state of the Jewish people and only the Jewish people, weakening the power of the judicial branch, cracking down on dissent in education and the media, and legalizing war crimes. And if that weren't extreme enough for you, I have the Union of Right-Wing Parties, led by Rafi Peretz. This isn't so much a party as it is an alliance of the religious Zionist party, the Jewish Home, and the far-right Jewish extremist party, Otzma Yisrael, whose members are classified by the U.S. Treasury Department as terrorists. They advocate for Israel to reform itself into a hardline, racially pure theocratic monarchy, kind of like Saudi Arabia. They have been compared by Israelis to both the Ku Klux Klan and the Taliban. They and Netanyahu have been rebuked by AIPAC and the AJC for even working together, and they were so extreme that there was some question until recently whether they would even be allowed to run. The Jewish home does not matter because they partnered with Otzma, so this is just as much on them. Now, at the risk of being anticlimactic, we're just going to move past that and talk about the parties that represent ultra-Orthodox Jews. Ultra-Orthodox Jews are actually a fairly small minority of Israeli voters. In fact, most of them don't vote at all, but if they do, they probably do for these two parties, and they tend to be crucial in forming a majority government. First up is United Torah Judaism, led by Deputy Health Minister Yaakov Litzman. It generally represents the interests of very insular Ashkenazi ultra-Orthodox Jews, particularly a group of rabbis called the Sages. UTJ is very anti-gay and anti-secular. It opposes the allowance of work or public services on Saturdays, and it supports the continuation of military draft exemptions and special welfare benefits for ultra-Orthodox adherents, as well as upholding the primacy of the chief rabbinate. The other ultra-Orthodox party is Shas, led by Interior Minister Arge Derry. Fun fact, Derry was originally Interior Minister in the 90s, then went to jail for corruption, came back, became Interior Minister again, and is probably going back to prison. Shas originally began as a voice for the rather small uh, group of Sephardic ultra-Orthodox Jews, but really has just become a more populist and belligerent version of UTJ. Now it's time to talk about the opposition. The Blue and White Party is led by former IDF Chief of Staff Benny Gantz. It actually has quite a few generals running. 
The blue and white is actually an alliance of three distinct parties. There's Gans's faction, but there's also Yeshaktid, which began in the early part of this decade as a very secular, anti-clerical party, but turns out to have just been kind of a vapid cult of personality for a political trust fund baby named Yair Lapid. The third and smallest faction is Telem, run by General Moshe Yalon, which is basically just a faction of Likud who want to get rid of Netanyahu by any means necessary. The Neveryahus, if you will. The blue and white broadly supports a two-state solution, is pro-secular and pro-LGBT rights, wants to reaffirm the equal status of non-Jewish citizens, and wants to rein in corruption and big business. While the blue and white are the main opposition party in this election, they're not a left-wing party. The main left-wing party is the Labour Party, led by Avi Gabay. Labor is the current incarnation of the Land of Israel Workers' Party, which essentially ran Israel for the first 30 years after independence. It is also my party. But it hasn't been doing so well in this election, not least because Gabay is really unpopular. He is a virtual unknown with no charisma and a habit of burning bridges with a lot of the party's historic allies, and he's constantly overshadowed by these two people who are much younger and more popular. If I were a betting man, I would probably bet on one of those two to take over when this election ends and Dubai inevitably gets the boot. Overall, the Labour Party is a pretty standard social democratic party. It supports more power for organized labor, it's against privatization of public assets, it's pro-LGBT rights, pro-secular, pro-minority rights, and supports a very proactive path to the two-state solution while maintaining a strong national defense and renewing support for Western-style liberal democracy which didn't used to be controversial, but here we are. Now, I know what you're thinking. Judean People's Front. Well, the People's Front of Judea. And for you, we've got Meretz, led by Tamar Zandberg. Meretz's platform is basically identical to Labour's, except it's slightly less pro-military. The difference between the two parties is more about image and tactics than policy. Most of the support for Labour comes from unions and the military and academia, whereas Merit's, for lack of a better word, is more crunchy. Their whole thing is that, unlike Labour, they refuse to be part of any government that is led by Likud, though the Labour Party in this election also said the same thing. They're kind of the Bernie bros of Israel. But really, Labour and Merit's get along very well. In fact, uh, it's kind of a joke that Merit's voters are all the girlfriends and wives of Labour voters. Now, 21% of Israelis are Arabs, and while at least half of them usually vote for one of the main parties, there's always at least one Arab interest party that tends to get into the Knesset. And in this election, that party is Hadash Ta'al, led by Ahmad Tibi and Ayman Odeh. This is actually another alliance between two parties. Ta'al is a somewhat vaguely defined Arab interest party, while Hadash is the Communist Party. And as the Communist Party, it always has at least one token Jewish member. On a vote-by-vote -vote basis within the Knesset, the communists tend to support the other left-wing parties, but actually bringing them into a government coalition would be politically untenable, so they tend to act more like spoiler parties, who make it harder for the center or left to take power. And that's your guide to Israeli political parties. There are some minor parties, which I will list here, that have a small chance of getting into the Knesset, but there are way too many of them this election, so I'm not going to bother and honestly, I don't really want to help them. So thank you very much. Tune in on Tuesday, next Tuesday, April 9th. I'm going to catch up on any stories I might have missed. There's going to be a q and I'm going to talk about how polling works and voting works. We'll see how the results come out, and then I will try to explain what might happen next. Thank you very much for having me along for this ride. I'm Sam Arano for The Avocado, and I will see you on Election Day.